the central highlands of Vietnam. People here don't just grow rice for a living, they also grow coffee and pepper, as well as manioc, also known as cassava. Cultivating it is hard work. Climate change has had an impact here. Farmers say yields are down because there's less rain. It's getting harder and harder to live from farming. Harvests are just too small. I think this year is even a little drier than before. What they do harvest ends up in a nearby tapioca factory. Nguyen Bak Mai is a deputy director of the company responsible for environmental issues. He was a factory manager for years. Extracting starch from cassava roots is a complex process. The tubers are peeled and chopped, then grated. The starch is extracted and then water is removed again. The process uses enormous amounts of energy, especially heat. The final product is a pure starch powder, which is used both for food and in the chemicals industry. Packaging takes place round the clock. 70 tons, day after day. Such factories damage the climate because the wastewater they produce, about 1.6 million litres daily, contains large amounts of organic compounds. The effluents are discharged into large ponds where they ferment, emitting methane, a greenhouse gas whose impact on the climate is 20 times that of CO2. Nyunbach Mai had the idea of capturing the gas to use it to fuel the factory's boilers. And it's simple. A huge balloon, as large as a football pitch. What was a waste product is now valuable biogas. We've really had good experience with this facility. It's good for the environment, the community and, of course, our business. In the first place, there's less environmental pollution. But it also helps us save on costs. That means we can produce much more efficiently. In this way, 10,000 cubic meters of gas are produced daily, much more than the factory needs. It's burnt in these ovens, cost-free heat using clean, renewable energy. The company saves the equivalent of about 170,000 euros a year on coal alone. And of course, the canteen has long been cooking with their own biogas. Monitoring points are built in everywhere. The security engineer checks them regularly. We don't just have enough gas. We have too much of it. We have to burn off the surplus. Buon Matat, the capital of Daklak province. People here are open to new ideas. The city is growing rapidly, but traditions are still maintained. In the countryside, you can find villages where people live the way they did a hundred years ago. But increasingly, people here also want to modernize. Deputy Director Nuan Bak Mai takes us along on a visit to a nearby resident. The factory isn't far beyond his garden fence. A lot has changed for the residents because the water ponds used to give off a stench. 
When the wind was unfavorable, it blew the fermentation gases right here. It was sometimes really disgusting. Now he sees the factory as more a blessing than a curse. He even cultivates cassava in his own garden and sells it to the factory at a good price. The entire community profits from the company's success. The kindergarten, for instance, receives regular donations. The biogas system is supervised by Vietnamese environmental experts. Soon it's set to receive emission credits, which can be exchanged for money, money to cover the costs and fund improvements. We'd like other companies to adopt this model. No matter how small the contribution is, it helps keep the world greener and the air cleaner. And in the end, that also helps people. Both the company and the environment are profiting from the biogas project. The foul-smelling wastewater has once again become good, clear water, which trickles into the surrounding rice fields in Vietnam's central highlands.